All right, everyone. Look at what I've got. Yes, it's a new Sletrek Slash Plus from, uh, well, basically aimed at the Enduro market, right? Lightweight Enduro bike, TQ motor, TQ battery, uh, 580 watts. Yes, yes, my friend. And, but what is this bike? It's an Enduro bike, but what does that mean? So let's have a look at the specification. So this is Leonardo, so from we're in the Trek store, Florence. We've got this amazing setup, so I thought, yeah. well, let's do it in front of this. We're gonna have a look at the bike first, and then we're gonna weigh it, and then we're gonna go ride it. So there's a lot gonna happen today. Yes. Or tomorrow. Lots of good it. things. So tell me about the specifications of this thing. What is so, it? so this is a full Enduro bike. Okay. Like, just with our help for, with the motor. And uh, it's 170, 170. 170, a, 170. Yes. Wow. Okay. So big things coming up. Uh, mallet setup. You can choose also to ride 29, full 29. Okay. 29, 29. Or yeah, just changing this small piece here. You can change this one and it will turn in 29. Oh, okay. So you change seconds. the mounting points. Yeah, and you just a... change that and that's perfectly good to go to 29. Okay. It's a high pivot bike. So new high pivot system. We are the first one to do that. So we have the link is put over the to the yeah. and uh, bottom bracket. So this one allows the rear wheel to move in a um, backward path okay. instead of a vertical path, which is really important. So if you take on a yeah. large rock or you hit something or sustained, let's yeah. say chatter, as they call trail chatter, this wheel moves more smoothly and yes. it's pre. So the initial part of the stroke means it should be a smoother. Faster yeah, it's a lot, ride is is a lot faster. I've tried this system on the on the slash and works really good because yeah. like this thing, when you want to open the throttle, just like except no throttle. Everything. That means you have to pedal or just yeah. don't brake. Don't brake. That's it. <laughs> full full sand that grip. That's the thing. So when someone says to me, my arms hurt, I said, well, you're braking too much. Yeah, don't brake. Don't that's break. a good thing. Yeah. No, but like this, this system helps a lot. Like okay. when you hit stuff, like in the rough stuff, especially not when you're taking big hits, uh, like but in the rough stuff, like this one helps a lot. The wheel to not be stuck into the no, like some holes yeah. and stuff so it helps a lot yeah. and we use this uh, either pulley on the top to prevent any type of chain growth uh, chain growth yeah. and that helps a lot also also the anti-rise as well anti-squat no both it things like way. so the anti-rise yeah. is helped by the split pivot that yeah. we have so it's a split pivot is the abp system that okay. we have on track so active active braking points mm -hmm. and that helps a lot the braking to not influence the, the so riding. when you brake the suspension keeps moving yeah and basically. our system like yeah. uh, make that like zero so the suspension is not influenced on the braking and that's the anti-rise. And the anti-squat is when you're pedaling, yes. the chain doesn't lock the suspension out. Yes, like basically when you pedal, mostly uh, on suspension system, what you have is that the chain will influence uh, the, the movement of the suspension, mostly on enduro bikes, but yeah. you can design the suspension to have the better things of both more words mm -hmm. and the problem with this one is that the anti-squat if you have a high pivot will be a lot influence on the high pivot because yeah. like when the suspension moves like moves a lot with the with the use of the pedals mm -hmm. so what we use is using this idle pulley yeah. that is put a little bit farther up and ah, okay. on yeah, the front side, forward. yeah, I see. And that helps to have a value of anti-squat around 100. Okay. That is the same value that we have on the top wheel. Okay. So it's the 110 millimeters bike. Mm -hmm. So it's like this bike pedals really good because yeah. it doesn't squat a thing with a suspension. And there's a point to that because this is a lightweight e-bike, which means yes. it's designed for the pedaling type of yes. person. Yes. So it wants that lightweight feel of a bike, which this has, and we're going to do a weigh-in in a minute, and also uh, wants, obviously, you know, a high-performance system. So this bike then seems like it's aimed specifically at the performance rider. Would I be correct? Yes, that's the performance rider, or either who, want, who is used to have like a normal uh, enduro bike and want to switch to a mm -hmm. e-bike. Because okay. this one like is really light and it's like, it's a big performance bike. Yeah. It's made to go up easily and having 
a lot a of fun ton, down a hill. ton of fun on the downhill. I'm really looking forward to that. Yes. So, uh, so let's have a quick look at the specifications. So we've got a Fox Fork 38 on the yes. front with the grip. Uh, grip damper. Okay. So it's uh, the lock. We have the classic lock. Flotex with a performance shock, okay. so it does have lock and rebound adjustments. We've also we have, got uh, Shimano brakes. Yes, yeah, Shimano uh, 6100 Okay, good brakes. quality brake. Good quality, entry level, but really good quality yeah. brakes with 200 millimeters rotors. Okay. Uh, carbon bar, that's really good for vi uh, vibrations on yeah. the hands. Uh, aluminium wheels, okay. Montreger aluminium wheels. With but these are like more of an enduro build, I see. Yeah, the, the yeah, rim width tire. Yeah, is rim width is uh, 30 millimeters, okay. so it's really good for enduro riding and two aggressive tires. tires as well. Yeah, I like really ag aggressive. You tires. haven't picked the the easy light no, tire no, to no. make the weight come down. These no. are proper enduro tires. This is enduro tires, really good. Yeah. And on the transmission, we have Shimano XT derailleur mm. with a XT cassette with a 10 to 51. Uh, clogs, okay. uh, 12 speed. So plenty of range for all the yeah, hills. And that's really good. So the other thing to note is this has got a bottle cage on it, which you can put a bottle in for water, but you can also put a battery extender. Yes. Which is 160 watts. 160 watts yeah. per hour. So you could, that means you can take this up to 740 40 watt hours with this motor, which peaks at 300 watts uh, on the power, but it's a 50 Newton meter which is enough power for the kind of person that wants this yeah. kind of bike. That's going to give you a, quite a range, I'd suggest. Yes, yes. This one, like, it has some smaller battery than the other ones that you can find on the market, like the classic e-bikes. Mm. But this TQ motor, like, is pretty good. Yeah, it's because another thing is silence. This bike it's is silence. going to be really quiet. I already know that. I've ridden these motors before. I'm looking forward to this. It's got a, something special, though, because it's yeah. got the Trek display with the Trek software. So this is a yes. new thing from TQ and Trek, no? Why? It's a collab. It's a collab. Okay. So it's mostly similar to TQ, what TQ has, but we integrated that with uh, our app mm. that you can also have the, the driving system so you can like see where you're going and it's in the navigation system. Okay. So you can see where you're going and you can modify easily all the, mm -hmm. all the infos of the bike. So and you download the Trek app for this, yes. not the TQ app. Trek app. Okay. And it connects like with okay. everything and it's really good. It works really good. So cool. also navigation and everything is integrated into, into the app mm -hmm. and that's really nice. Also with the, with the display is a little bit different. It will be easy to use. Okay, cool. Well, that's pretty good. I think we've covered most points. Last thing, price. What does this come in? And this is not that this is the 8.7, yes. correct? We are telling the European retail price that is 8,199 euros. Which includes tax. So yeah, include so, taxes. So the American guys who watch this, you'll say, oh, but it's cheap in America. No, because you've got to add your sales tax. And yeah, yeah, here things are a little bit higher, but yeah. like so, but that's the tax it. is included. Okay, cool. Well, that looks pretty much everything. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this out on the trail. But first, we're going to do a weigh-in and find out if a lightweight e-bike really is a lightweight e-bike. It's e lightweight. Especially. Oh. So we've got the scale. It's on there. It's zero. It's so zero. Yeah. Right, it's zero. We've got the bike, no pedals. Let's weigh it. What do we think? It's an enduro bike, everybody. Remember that. It's an enduro bike. It's got a very robust, strong build, a 38 fork on it. And 20.47 kilos. It's good. This is the L size. L size. Wow. Enduro build, strong fork, chunky suspension on the back. We've got a piggyback uh, shock. Enduro-esque tires, strong wheels, wide rims, that 580 watt hour battery, not bad. It's nice. So I would expect with this bike, and that's the thing, everyone's a little bit obsessed with weight at the moment and full power bikes, but it's not possible to have an Enduro build bike uh, like this, at uh, this weight, no, without like having that this style of motor no. and battery. It's impossible. It's just, it's what, so this is a really impressive thing. And remember guys, this is not the top of the range bike. The top of the range one comes in at just under 20 kilos. Yeah, yeah. less than 20, like oh. uh, 19 and a half ish. Okay. So it's good. Like also yeah. with this one is good, but the top end is like 
pretty light. Wow, I'm excited to go ride this.